the uh, latest uh, reports we get out of Britain is they're under the highest uh, terror alert right now, critical, uh, and that means that there could be something imminent in that country. And there's reason for the fear. They get, let's get the very latest on all of this with Katie Hopkins of DailyMail.com, global columnist. Katie, what is the fear right now? It's very real. I, I can't explain it to you any better than that, that actually it's every minute of every day. I've been speaking to a lot of people today and they don't know why they're so tired. And it's that fatigue you get of always being slightly aware that you might be a target. People here genuinely are frightened for their children now. I've had a lot of emails from mothers, from fathers saying, I don't want to go out. I won't take my child to the mall this weekend. I don't want my child going on the school trip. I've just cancelled my school trip. I won't let my child go out after the football match. I want him home. And there's a lot of texts being sent. A lady I saw earlier said she'd had three texts from her mother already today, just checking she's okay. So there's this kind of weird, all pervasive fear. And it's very curious because we have our leaders standing up saying, we are strong, we are united, we are defiant, we will not let terrorists win. And then at the same time behind them, 3,800 troops, military armed personnel are marching into London, a thousand of whom, as your reporter rightly says, are at Buckingham Palace. Another 2,800 dotted around places, houses of common shut to the public and also changing of the guard cancelled. I saw a group of school children today, I think they were French kids piling off a bus and I wanted to shout at them, you know, break up, run away, you know, split up, don't be all in one place. I'm genuinely frightened for people and you see soft targets everywhere. And that's very much what the terrorists have managed to achieve by attacking our children, by killing an eight-year-old whose mother's still in a coma in hospital and doesn't even know her child is dead yet. It really strikes at the heart of mothers and fathers all over the country. You know, we're, we're learning now that uh, Salman uh, Abedi, who was behind this attack, uh, his, not only his father and brother arrested in Libya today, uh, hence this concern that this might have been a more widespread plan uh, attack, but, but, but that he was known to authorities, his recent visit, to Libya, some chatter on the internet and on social media sites where uh, authorities might have known that he was being radicalized. Very easy for me to play Monday morning quarterback here and wondering why they did not follow up. But we, we keep seeing this play out. What's the reaction on the part of Britons to this news? It's very, so, so Britain is in a very difficult place. You know, regular people, normal people, upset, shocked, heartbroken by what's happened to our country. And then what we're faced with this afternoon is a few hard facts that are very difficult to hear. They knew he was on the watch list. He was on the watch list. We always get this information. He was known to authorities, which means, frankly, nothing. We know he just arrived back from Libya via Syria, where they believe he was radicalized. We know that he was acting strangely in his home. He was doing strange things. He was flying a black flag from his window. He was marching up and down the street preaching the Quran. We know this attack was going to happen quite possibly and we did nothing about it. We let him walk into our country. We say we will stand up to terror, but in this case, it feels like all we did was put out the welcome mat. And bear in mind, there's 3,000 others just like him roaming our streets. And there's another 650 jihadis returning to the UK. And we are going to let them in, it seems, here in the UK at the moment because of the liberals uh, that have the kind of authority on what we should think. Uh, liberals believe we should protect the human rights of the jihadi above the actual right to life of our little daughters and our sons. And that's a very hard thing for us to face when we're also told, watch out, watch out, we can't tell you where, but an imminent attack is due. So we're waiting for the footstep to fall. I see it like we're like ants and we're just waiting to be crushed. We don't know if we'll be run over, blown up, mown over or taken out with a knife, but we know it's coming.